Hello everyone, it's Molly from College Express. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I am in my apartment because we just got 68 inches of snow in Boston. So it's really gross outside and uh, I have a little bit of cabin fever, not too much. Um, yeah, so I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to do a vlog for you guys um, on this article that we recently published to our website that I really like and I wanted to expand on and give you my personal experience and perspective on. The article was written by one of our student writers named Shivani. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for writing it. It's an excellent article. And uh, also, I want to show you guys my amazing coffee mug. There's a little giraffe inside. I don't know if you can see without me spilling my coffee. Let's get right into it. The article is catered towards high school students, but this can also be for college students as well because I've done both high school and college and definitely there are academic weaknesses in both of those realms, unfortunately. But in terms of high school, the I feel like the subject matter is very concrete unless you're doing, you know, the one or two electives that they let you have per year, you know, whether it's gym or art or photography or chorus, whatever it is. But there's very little wiggle room for you to do something, you know, that you want to do. It's not like college where you create your schedule every semester. So unfortunately, there are just some subjects that aren't going to resonate with you. For me, that was definitely history. I love history, to be honest with you. Like, I love learning about things that have happened in the past. But when it came to me having to do a history class, I was not a fan. I was not a fan. I don't know what it was, but just learning about all the boring things and just the memorization of the numbers and, oh my gosh, it was hard for me. And I never did well in history. I'm just going to flat out tell you that right now, person to person here, soul to soul, I never got above a B minus in history in high school and in college anyways I still made it <laughs> with that being said uh, we all have that one subject that just it's really whether it's you're not interested in it whether you think it's difficult whether there's another factor that you know is coming into play that you just it's not clicking with you so the reason that I'm here today is to tell you how you can identify those weaknesses and make them a little bit better, at least a little bit better. The first step is accept it and make a plan. So they always say accepting it is like the first step, which is true. So you have to know, okay, well, uh, each, each time my grades come out, I'm getting below a B minus, C minus, whatever in history. So I need to accept that I'm not good at it for whatever reason, but you need to understand that, okay, I am I have this weakness, I'm not perfect, so I need to make a plan to improve this subject so it's not bringing down everything else. The smartest way to go about making a plan is to have and use the resources that are at your disposal. Can I say this more? Talk to your teacher, talk to your guidance counselor, get a tutor. If you're a freshman or sophomore, talk to an upperclassman. If you're an upperclassman, please, please, please reach out to somebody who is there to help you. Even if, I mean, if you, even if you're in college, go to office hours and talk to your teacher and ask them if they have any recommendations from them knowing you as a student, what is it that is just not working for you in this class and what, what changes can be made so that you can do better. Then once you accept that, then you need to be like, okay, let's make a plan. Just do it, like Shia LaBeouf would say. <laughs> uh, it's funny. So obviously you need to adjust your schedule a little bit if you're struggling in one class as opposed to another. And not gonna lie, in high school and in college when I was really passionate about a subject, like really passionate about all my English classes and my writing classes and my like uh, my communication classes in college. I just love them so much. So I would kind of like push aside the classes that I didn't like because I was spending so much time reading about my classes that I loved and I spent so much time putting my heart and my soul into the papers that I had to write or the presentations that I had to give. 
looking back, it probably would have been smart for me to accept that, okay, well, I know I love all these classes, but I have to take away some of that time and put it towards history because I can afford to do that because I'm good at writing and doing those classes, but I need to definitely do a little extra reading in my history classes because it's not working out for your girl. Yeah, so seriously, you just need to be responsible, adjust your schedule, give up a little bit of time, even if it's not taking out of your social life. Like, I'm not saying you have to do history on the weekends or whatever, you know, class you don't like. If you have other classes that you can take time away from, then you should do that. And then another way to deal with your academic weakness is to identify your way of learning. So if you're trying to learn a subject, say you're in a chemistry class, which can be very difficult because it's, you know, it's a lot of formulas. What do you have to do? You have to like transfer grams to moles or something like that. Oh God, it makes me nauseous thinking about that. If you're not like a person who can just look at something and learn it, then you just have to take a different approach basically because clearly the approach that you're taking isn't working. Like for me, if I was just reading about history, reading the textbook, reading these like long packets that we had to fill out in AP history, never forget, senior year, I just, it wasn't working for me because that's not how I learn. The way that I learn personally is I like to make diagrams, I like to connect colors with things, I like to, you know, do like a flow chart or something. I'm very, very visual and that is totally okay if you're a visual learner or if you're not. You need to utilize that better. And once you identify that, you can use it to your advantage. So learn chemistry, learn history, learn whatever it is in the way that is most comfortable for you. Maybe you have to take out a little bit more time to, you know, adjust the way that the curriculum is, but it's going to be worth it. Stay focused is the next point. It's so hard, I know, because I'm the type of person that has trouble focusing, seriously. I've been staring at this one snowflake that's stuck on my window that looks like a cat while trying to vlog this. Like, I'm not afraid to admit that. Um, it really does look like a cat. So yes, it is important to stay focused. We actually, in the article, Shivani includes some tools slash apps that you can use that can help you stay focused and keep your mind on things. You do need to have a little bit of discipline and take the steps to learn how you're going to focus better and what it's going to take. So very important tip. And then last but not least, have a positive outlook. I get it. It's hard to have a positive outlook on history if you don't like it like me. Like, ugh, I hate it. If anything, just listen to me now. It is going to be okay. It's not the end of the world if you're not good at something. Everybody has an academic weakness, I promise you, unless you're Einstein. Honestly, Einstein probably wasn't that good at, like, what's, what's Einstein not good at? I can't see him being, like, a guitar player, though, you know? But yeah, try to have a positive outlook. I promise you that it is possible to, even, imp even if you don't get great at something, at least you can improve. So... I hope that this video was helpful to you. Just know that we all have our academic weaknesses. Now you all know how much I passionately do not like history classes. Love history, super cool, but no to the classes. And uh, no. Anyways, you all should subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, comment on this video, tweet me, DM me on Instagram, whatever you have to do, let me know what you think of this. If you're in the Northeast and are experiencing the snow, stay warm. If you're not in the Northeast, I'm jealous. <laughs> Enjoy the uh, warm weather wherever you are, and we will see you in our next video. Bye, guys.